So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to use Field Genius and an RTK receiver to record a topographic map and using a couple of settings in here, I'm gonna show you how to do it faster than you've ever done it before. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna show you how to use the auto recording feature and your quick set tolerances to take kind of a tedious process to one that you don't even have to think about inside of Field Genius. Real quick, I'm Nolan from Benchmark and for the past 20 years or so, we've been doing our best to help surveyors get the most out of their equipment in the field. So if you wanna learn more about this equipment learn more about what we're doing on this channel check out some of our other videos make sure you hit that subscribe button and do hit the newsletter link down below we put a ton of extra fun stuff that doesn't necessarily come up on our youtube channel in there so before we get into actually doing a little bit of a survey and getting into how we're going to make this topographic map i want to go over a couple of the basics for those of you that have never used rtk or those of you who are maybe looking to get into it and that is a what we're going to need and then b what we're actually going to be doing in today's video so the first thing before we get any further is for today's video as I mentioned, we're going to be generating a topographic map and we're going to be using an RTK receiver. We've got some videos on what RTK is, how it works, that kind of thing. In my case, I'm going to be using our Hemisphere S631. Now, we're going to need some software to record our points on. I'm going to be using Field Genius for Android, but any software will work. Some of these tips might not work in those softwares, but you need something to record points on. Field Genius for Android, great option. And then I'm going to be using my lovely Android tablet here to run all of the software and connect up to my receiver. Now, topographic maps are a great tool for those of you that need to know your elevations and how the terrain function and kind of rolls throughout your whole thing. And we actually have a video where we did a topographic map to design something called Swales. We'll link to it somewhere on screen here. I'm not sure if it's my right or your guys is right. It'll be somewhere on screen where Renee talks about using the Nano 7 to do so swales on a farm. But you can also use this for a number of other things. Like maybe we want to do some drainage. I'm going to go survey a road in today's video. And we can use that to kind of figure out which way the water is flowing. Do I need to change my roadscape? Maybe I want to use it for something like dirt or earth moving to figure out how much terrain I need to move, how much I need to transform. But regardless, at the end of the day, this is a preliminary step that we can export to do a bunch of design work on in CAD or maybe even on our data collector if that's the best way to go forward. So before we head outside to do this topo survey, I want to show you guys the settings I'm using because there's a couple of tricks you can use in Field Genius to really speed yourself up in the field. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set my tolerances to optimize them for the survey I'm about to do. So if I go into my instrument settings here and go to my active tolerance, you can see right now I already actually have RTK fixed topo. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to change a couple of things. The first of them is I'm going to make sure instead of three observations, I'm going to take one observation. I'm doing Doing a pretty basic topo that's all i'm going to need for this project now my horizontal and vertical standard deviations those are all perfectly set for what i'm doing but the most important thing here at the bottom is i'm going to make sure i have allow tolerance override set auto store accepted position and skip new point after the measure screen and the reason i'm going to do that is now when the receiver records a point, it's automatically going to store. There's not going to be any lag. I don't have to input anything on my data collector. It's automatically going to store the point. And that's a big deal because if I've got this attached to a quad or my truck or I'm just walking through the bush, and I want to be able to record points and not think about it. I don't even have to look at the data collector. It's just going to automatically store point after point. So once I have my tolerance set, that's the first thing I need to make sure to get the most on my topo survey. The second thing I'm going to want to do here is change my measure mode because I obviously don't want to have to hit the store point button every single time I want to store a point. What I want to do is I want to have it automatically record my point. So I'm going to select from my measure modes here, auto recording. Now I have two different options for my auto recording. I can either use a distance or a time interval. In my case, I'm going to be using a distance interval because I want to store point every half meter for the topo survey I'm about to do. So I'm going to make sure my interval mode is set to distance and then my distance interval is set to 0.5 meters. Now I can change my point name here from auto to whatever I want. I can associate code and line work if I want to. So if I want to change my tolerance settings and create some custom ones for auto recording here, I can hit apply tolerance settings. But once I have this all set, I'm going to click on OK here. And now I'm more or less ready to go do my survey. And these features here are going to save me a ton of time in the field. So I've come over to the spot I want to do my topo on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to record a little topographic map to get some contour lines of this street here. So we're going to start where I'm standing and we're going to head down to that red car going back and forth across the street. And what I forgot to mention in the office here is I'm also going to be using the tilt sensor on my 631 here, which means I don't have to level my pole. So if you have this attached to the cab of your truck or you've got it on a quad, you also don't have to worry about 
about that while you're bumping along, the orientation of the receiver doesn't matter. So to get started here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my glove off and press the play button on my screen here. And what you're gonna see is as I'm moving, I'm just starting to get more and more points. And as I'm keeping my pole more or less on the ground, it's just automatically storing positions here. So I'm gonna keep going down, up and down the street here and auto storing these points. And I'm gonna view my map so I can see myself a little bit better here. Keep zooming in. And you can see this is really, really easy when I'm using this auto record feature because I don't even have to think about it. I'm kind of just walking back and forth and we're automatically picking up these points every half a meter or every 50 centimeters. And what I'm gonna do is, this is gonna allow me to generate a perfect terrain model of my street here that I can use to kind of map the drainage or do whatever else I want. And I obviously using these intervals can set them tighter and tighter or as big as I want to get the resolution on my topo map that I need. And then I can design whatever I want. If I need to redo the streetscape, if I need to redo the drainage, whatever it is on here. And because I got this tilt sensor, I don't have to worry about my pole at all. It's gonna be perfectly level, no matter what I'm doing, as far as the receiver is concerned, no matter how much I'm tilting this all over the place and moving it, it's always gonna be perfect. I don't even have to worry about the bubble on my pole. And one of the other nice things about having this auto record feature is when it's, you know, minus 12, 13, 14, like it is today, which is relatively balmy for this week, where I'm at, I don't actually have to take the gloves off and I don't even really have to pay attention to my screen. I kind of just walk back and forth mindlessly, keeping my eye on traffic while my pull and receiver and software does all the work for me. What you can see here is I get to my car. I've now got a map in relatively, I don't know, five minutes here. I'm just walking back and forth with my receiver and keeping the tip of the pole right on the ground here. And when I need to stop my map, I can either pause it using the pause button here or click the stop button and I can continue with my survey, adjust any of my settings or just start doing whatever I want from here with my receiver. So let's head back to the office and kind of take a look at what these results look like and kind of what we can do with this topo map feature. All right, so we've done our survey here and I've imported it onto my desktop here so we can look at it a bit easier and with a bit more colors and variations. And what you can see here is if I use the 3D viewer, in my case in Field Genius Windows, we can see that we've got our slope, which is to be expected as you saw from the video there, we had a pretty good little slope on our road there. And what you can see is I've actually generated automatically these contour lines here. So these red lines on the screen that I'm looking at are my contour lines. I've set it to every half foot here. You can set it to whatever you want and export it with whatever you want, but I'm now ready to use this map to do whatever design I want. So if I need to regrade this software, I can generate a new surface, import it to my data collector, use that to guide my machines. If I need to, you know, lay out a new water course on there to help drainage, I can do that as well. I can do whatever I want with this map, but as you saw it's pretty easy with field genius i basically just hit start start walking around or driving around or i don't know if you want to ride your bike around on the job site i don't judge here you can do whatever you want to collect all of these points very quickly and then you know it didn't take me any effort to do this inside of uh, my desktop here i just imported my points as a csv turned on a surface and i'm now ready to kind of do whatever I want with this. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, maybe check out what else you can do with Field Genius. Check out this next video or check out Survey Assistant. Go see what you can do with it.